I still remember what it felt like to have sleep paralysis. It's not always as scary as they say. Sometimes you're just stuck in place and go back to sleep. Not the greatest feeling in the world, but not too bad, right? Well, it saved me one time. When I was young, I'd go over to my cousin's house every week. We'd have a sleepover, play games, read horror stories. It was the highlight of my week, but it came to an end. Me and my cousin Allie were having one of our sleepovers. We were only eight, so we were forbidden from watching horror films. However, horror stories and games gave both me and Allie that great thrill and playful fear. We were reading a story called Fingers. Allie had found it in the horror section of the library on his last school trip. Allie told me the story was a real one, where a demon would find the purest individual of every sentient being across all planes of existence and take their soul. I had no clue what any of this meant, and when I asked, Ali merely laughed and said only clever people would get it. I'm not sure he understood it himself, but I wasn't scared. The story didn't seem that realistic to me. I knew it was a pretty mundane story compared to the others we had read. Later that night, Ali's dad, my uncle, gave me a spare mattress from their big, surprisingly glorious loft. He put it in Allie's room near his bed and said that I was to sleep on it. I didn't hesitate to agree. It was magnificent compared to the previous inflatable bed. I would always end up rolling off of it in the middle of the night. Me and Allie continued our conversations and gossiping long after Allie's dad had fallen asleep. His room was very close to ours, but we weren't at all worried about making a lot of sound as he was a very heavy sleeper. At some point, I felt a sudden urge to go to the toilet, just as Allie decided that he would go to sleep. I was about to leave the room when I heard a bolt moving. This meant that someone was on the inside of the toilet and had locked the door. I didn't think much of it, so I sat down on the mattress, waiting to hear the bolt unlatch. I was looking around when I saw a book under Allie's bed. Cool, a horror story. I began reading it and was so entranced that I didn't think much of the trash can falling over, nor of a man's grunts. I woke up the next morning drenched in my own urine. I must have pissed myself in my sleep. Then I realized I was surrounded by police officers and blood. I remember being confused, asking one of the police officers where my family was. A survivor, he hollered. Suddenly, more men, who I now realize were all wearing forensics gear, took me to an officer in blue uniform, who sat me next to him in a car. He asked me if I knew what happened. No, I replied. A bad man got into your house at night and, well, he did some bad things to your family. They aren't with us anymore. I didn't understand what any of this meant, until I got home, that is. My parents told me that a man had climbed through the bathroom window, killed my uncle, raped my cousin, then killed him when he was done. I was left with a shocked look on my face, as well as trauma after remembering the blood-stained bed I'd fallen asleep under. I can't believe I lived, and I can't understand why the man chose my uncle's house. They never found the man, and I was on the news as the miraculous survivor of cold-blooded murder. Lots of news shows wanted to talk to me, and at the start, my parents agreed, for the money, of course, but after my first interview, they saw how traumatized I was and never agreed to another interview. I thought I was safe afterwards, so you can bet I got chills when I heard a man outside my window. His voice was deep and he only said one thing, I don't like survivors. After calling the police, they found a small piece of paper with the symbol of the famous Zodiac Killer. The symbol was drawn in blood and upon further inspection was found to be the blood of my cousin Allie. So please, if you ever hear any suspicious sound, please run.